Hello everyone, this is Showtime112. This is part 2 of our video about Saiful Azam, an extraordinary pilot who served with four different air forces and scored air to air kills with three. In part 1, you could hear about his service in the 1965 Indo Pakistani War, and you could see how he achieved a victory over an Israeli mistake while flying for the Jordanian Air Force. Watch that video if you missed it. As Jordan lost all of its Hawker Hunters and Israeli attacks, Azam and the remaining pilots were sent to Iraq, which also operated the Hunter. Iraqis had launched several attacks against Israel from their airbase known as H-3. This was seen by the Israeli leadership as a reason to launch airstrikes against this western Iraqi airfield. After the first two strikes, Israeli pilots claimed a large number of enemy aircraft destroyed on the ground, but IDF leadership still ordered a third strike for the morning of June the 7th. In the meantime, Jordanian pilots in Saifu Azam reached the Iraqi airbase at Habaniya and began flying the Iraqi hunters. At about 10 am on June the 7th, a formation of four of them took off to patrol over H3. He was led by Saifu Azam with Iksan Shurdam again as his wingman, while two Iraqi pilots flew as numbers 3 and 4. The hunters were supposed to land and refuel at H3, but then a warning about incoming Israeli fighters came and they stayed in the air. The Israeli attack wasn't very well planned. The group consisted of four Voiture bombers and four Mirage 3 fighters. The Mirages also carried bombs and they were expected to drop them on the runway first and then provide air cover for the Voitures. The lead Voiture was a two-seat 2N model, while others were single-seat 2A. The same ingress route was used as the first two times and unsurprisingly, the attack achieved little surprise. As the Israeli formation approached H3 airfield, they were spotted by the Iraqi hunter flight. Saifu Azam and his flight dived on the attackers, with him and his Jordanian wingman going after the Voitures and the two Iraqi pilots going for the Mirages. As the Mirages dropped their bombs on the runway, one of the Mirage pilots, Captain Gideon Dror, pulled up and noticed two hunters trying to attack his flight. He turned to fight them. Saifu Azam now switched his focus from the Voitures to the Mirages. But it was too late to save his number 4. Inexperienced 1st Lieutenant Ghalib Al-Hamid al Qaisi al was hit by the Israeli pilot and the hunter crashed. The Iraqi pilot didn't eject. But Azam then attacked Dror's Mirage. Azam was able to aim and hit the Mirage with his cannons. The Israeli pilot ejected and was captured.
Another Israeli pilot, Ezra Dotan, attacked the remaining Iraqi flown hunter and claimed it shot down. According to Iraqi sources, this hunter escaped and survived. After shooting down the Mirage, Saiful Azam pulled up and then noticed the Vautour coming head on and below him. He then performed a near blackout split ass maneuver which placed him right behind the Vautour. He was closing fast. He fired his guns from an extremely short range and barely avoided the debris from the exploding bomber. Iraqi No. 3, Lt. Zainal, also claimed getting behind the Vautour and shooting it down. He witnessed two ejection seats separating from it. Israeli captain Yitzhak Golan, who flew one of the single-seat Vautours ejected and was captured by Iraqi troops. As for the claims on the Iraqi side, Saiful Azam claimed one Mirage and one Vautour. This was officially confirmed and he was decorated by the Iraqi government. Iraqi Lieutenant Samir Zainal also claimed the Vautour and a Mirage and he was given the same official two-kill credit. Azam's wingman Iksan Shurdom claimed the same thing, one Vautour and one Mirage. Even ground defense claimed one Israeli aircraft shot down. Israeli publications usually mention three losses, one Mirage and two Vautours. Besides already mentioned Dror and Golan, the two-seater Vautour lost in action was flown by captains Shlomo Keren and Alexander Inbar Meltzer. Their aircraft was found by Saudi Arabian border guards. An Iraqi army patrol reported finding another crashed Israeli fighter, a mirage with pilot's body still in the cockpit. Pilot's name was supposedly Ezra. One of the Mirage pilots participating in the mission was Ezra Dotan, but he is known to have returned home and continued his career in the Israeli Air Force after the war, so this couldn't have been him. Some Israeli sources are a bit inconsistent about the number of aircraft lost and pilots killed and captured. An article by Israeli newspaper Haaretz mentions one pilot and two navigators dead, plus two pilots captured by name, Dror and Golan. The Vautour book from the IAF aircraft series, written by A. Dor, mentions that two Vautours were downed one flown by Golan and the other manned by Keren and Imbars, and that three Israeli airmen were killed. Since Golan was captured alive, both these sources seem to suggest that another Israeli aircraft, probably a Mirage, might have been downed. Only one Vautour participating in the attack was a two-seater, so the loss of two of these aircraft couldn't explain the three dead aviators. Recollections of pilots who fought on the Iraqi side or witnesses on the ground differ to a degree and the exact truth of which pilot shot down which aircraft might never be known. One thing we know about Saiful Azam is that he was officially credited with four air-to-air -air victories in his career. While this keeps him one kill short of an A status, this is still an extraordinary achievement in the jet age. 
fact that he scored these victories formally flying for three different air forces and mostly fighting against highly effective Israeli pilots is indeed unique. But he went through a period of suffering. In 1971, he planned to defect and join the fight for liberation of East Pakistan, modern-day Bangladesh. His plan was discovered and he was arrested. Some sources say that only the intervention of Jordanian King Hussein saved him from court-martial. Azam then spent three years in house arrest and in 1974 he was released to Bangladesh, where he joined the country's air force. He retired in 1977 but continued flying. He died in 2020. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal because that is the only way for the channel to continue producing new videos. Thank you in advance and keep watching Showtime 112.